Hello, I am back in Canada and figured I would do a little review of my time in Florence. Um, I forgot my glasses in the truck and frankly I am too lazy to go get them. So <laughs> we are making do with my fancy pink sunglasses today. So I was in Florence for a week to work on my watercolors at a school there. The one thing I like about the school is it works on my schedule. Um, because I work shift work in the way that my holidays work, it's sometimes not the easiest to get courses and that to line up when I have my time off. So that is awesome. And it's specifically tailored to my level and what I want to learn. So this time I called them up and said, I want to work on my watercolors. This is what I want to achieve and sent over some samples of what I wanted to work towards and they were able to accommodate me. So that was awesome. So for me, that is probably the most ideal condition. I found it very beneficial uh, when you think about going to school for a week. What can you really learn in a week? Um, I had a few people ask me that. What can you learn in a week? But my teachers were very good at taking the point at where I was and showing me the direction I needed to go next and then laying down a good foundation so that I'll be able to work towards that on my own. Um, so for me, it was very worth my time. Uh, the Another question I usually tend to get is about the financial aspect, either in the comments of, oh, I wish I had your money, or why wouldn't you just stay in Canada and do that and save yourself some money? So for the watercolor course or the watercolor workshop, um, there was only one I can find in Canada. And I looked in the US too, there's two specific artists that I would have liked to work with, but they couldn't accommodate me. So the US was out of the picture um, in Canada. I could only find one that would work with the week that I had to be able to do this. And it was nine hours away from where I live. So my flights for Florence ended up costing about a hundred dollars more, hundred dollars Canadian more than it would have to go nine hours away, which is absolutely ridiculous. If you ask me, <laughs> it should not cost me more to leave to stay in the country and travel than it does to actually leave the country. But I digress. <laughs> uh, my accommodations cost me about $300 less in Florence than it would have in Canada. And even food wise, um, you know, my weekly groceries for my lunches and odds and ends I needed there would have cost me double in Canada. Um, if I wanted to go really cheap, I could get a pizza the size of my head and a beer for $9 over there. Um, yeah, and like most of my meals for dinner were probably around the $20 range. So realistically, my, well, not even realistically, my trip to Florence cost less than it would have cost me to stay in Canada. So for me, that was a no brainer. Um, and I would, <laughs> if I could be in Florence every day of the week, I definitely would. But I did take some absolutely horrible videos um, of Florence. I need to get better at videoing stuff and, you know, commemorating my trips. Most of my my photos from my trips are usually like snippets of like a shadow <laughs> that I liked or a color that I wanted to capture or you know, like some obscure thing that 
absolutely nobody would get the reference of except for me on my phone but I threw together what I had and pictures of my completed work there and I'll do a little voiceover and we'll we'll, we'll talk about that my spoken my my spoken Italian is still atrocious absolutely atrocious <laughs> but um, my comprehension has actually gone up quite a bit. The last time I was in Italy, in Italy I had about, I would say, 10% comprehension. And I found I was catching the gist of or understanding about 70% of the conversations I had. I can order food proficiently, so and coffee so we know I won't starve which is nice but it was very really nice just to be able to practice um, I can yeah I can do basic small talk and order food that's about it um, proficiently but it was very nice to be able to practice I definitely need to practice a lot lot more and it was nice to be able to hear Italian being spoken naturally so I felt that that was probably very, that was actually really helpful comprehension wise. I feel if I would have had maybe another couple weeks there, another month or two, I think it would have been very good for my Italian. So without further ado, I'll go to the voiceovers and you know, any questions or that, feel free to leave them. I'll get back to you. Doesn't matter where I am in the world. My day always starts out the same. A cup of coffee. And I realized when I got here, I didn't have a kettle or a coffee pot. So I had to make do with what I had. I think it was day three or four when I found the mini espresso percolator mocha pot thing in the back of the shelf. But... Luckily, about two blocks away, I had an awesome coffee shop who would make me a big to-go cup of Americano every morning with some delicious pastries. I would wake up every morning, I would open my windows wide and let the sounds from the street trickle in. I was at a pretty big intersection, I guess not big, a busy intersection. Uh, just around the corner from, what is it called, Al, Al Antico Venario, which is this world famous sandwich shop. Um, I think that translates to old wine cellar or something like that, or old wine bar, antique wine bar maybe. I'm not sure about their wine, but their sandwiches are definitely something you need to stop and partake in if you're ever in Florence. They are phenomenal and the smells that would come from the from the store every day would make you salivate. But it was nice to hear the sounds on the street and people talking and being social. I would sit down every morning and ink the sketches I did the day before probably at this point when I was questioning why I do pencil sketches instead of just doing ink and decided that I was going to get a fountain pen at uh, Fabriano and not thinking <laughs> I put watercolor over my fountain pen ink and made a mess in one of my sketchbooks but the thing I like about inking in the morning is it's not mentally engaging and I find it very relaxing and helps me kind of sort my thoughts out for the day. You see my beautiful roses that I got gifted the night before from some lovely people from Texas sitting on the table there. So being in class for eight hours a day, you think I wouldn't want to do this in the morning, but I still enjoy doing it. My first day of class, 
when I got in, my teacher told me I was going to be doing two of the same drawing. I was going to try to copy a watercolor painting of a bunch of grapes. And in the first painting, he, which is on the left hand side, he let me just go at it and do what I do and let me go to the point of my frustration and almost ruining the paper by trying to lift off some of the dark colors that I had put on. And in the second one, he kind of walked me through starting with my light colors and bringing my darks up a little bit more slowly. And the thing I liked about having the two, two pieces was I could see where I went wrong and I was very happy with the second piece. And what is Florence without a little bit of yummy cakes and coffee? On my second day, I was doing a watercolor of Florence and I had issues with being too detailed. <laughs> I was trying to draw every little detail, which is usually my issue with watercolors instead of being a little bit more loose and and free in those first couple layers and trying to preserve my whites was difficult with this piece i feel like in the second piece i loosened it up a bit and i got my colors a little bit more on par this is probably the piece where i realized how big of an issue my impatience is and I felt like you know the second piece definitely improved from the first piece usually at night time um, I would go out for supper you know stop at an absolutely adorable bar just down the street from me called Angie's Pub and it would never surprise me that you'd be walking down these old streets and then you'd turn a corner or something would come into view in the distance and you just see these absolutely gorgeous buildings. I would usually stop and just take a moment to sketch something or, you know, just take in the moment because they were absolutely beautiful. On the third day, I started doing a picture from just a reference photo, a real life reference photo. And this is where I have to practice a little bit more restraint with my tendency to add my dark colors way too soon. Um, when I paint, I usually find my lightest lights and my darkest darks and I use those as reference points for all my other colors and in this one I started from lights and slowly brought those darks up which was really you wouldn't think it would be that difficult but in my brain it it just felt like thinking backwards and I really enjoyed how this one turned out and of course, as I travel carry on only, I had to do laundry and it was raining quite a bit for a couple of days I was there, so I couldn't sit out on the patio, but I did get to enjoy a lovely lasagna there. On day four, I was painting from a still life setup and here I placed my darks in on the cloth in the picture a little bit too soon um, and I find that they don't have the depth that the shadows do on the right hand side and it's really apparent to me why you build up those darks the way you do with the watercolor. I particularly love the way the bottle turned out in this picture and the the way that the shadows ended up uh, coming to life with this 
this one I felt a lot less frustrated than I did with the other ones and I think I was starting to get a little bit more comfortable with the medium and of course it rained it rained rain rain um, I would had an umbrella with me and would go <laughs> stand on a corner and sketch under my umbrella and when it wasn't raining I would partake in some beautiful pizza on patios and go check out Duomo which is my absolutely favorite building in the world and draw multiple multiple pictures of it of all the buildings in the world it's just it's one that really captures me I wandered into Piazza della Signora it was just around the corner from my place. I probably walk through this every night. And it's absolutely stunning with all the statues. Um, one can sit there and sketch for hours. And I would. <laughs> I ended up tucking myself into behind the statue here with my umbrella. And did a couple of sketches. You can go into into the castle and see the beautiful, beautiful God. tiles on the roof and all the different statues. It's just beautiful. <laughs> For my last piece, I didn't quite have enough time to finish it, but I think this one was probably the one where a lot of things were starting to click in my brain and figure out ways that I could paint while respecting the layers and my water management and my patience and how to make sure that my darks in the forefront weren't turning out too flat. I feel that at this point piece that I still have to finish um, I feel like it was, was a start of where I need to be going and I'm very excited to continue on in this journey of learning watercolors <laughs> Florence itself is a beautiful city even when it's rainy and cloudy it's probably one of my favorite cities in the world ciao